Welcome aboard Delta Airlines. Please enjoy your flight and thanks for choosing Delta. Jody Avergan here. Thanks for listening to ESPN Films 30 for 30 podcasts from the producers of the award-winning 30 for 30 series. These new audio documentaries are an incredible collection of sports stories you need to hear to believe. It's really a win-win. Delta Airlines makes your travel experience easy and enjoyable with real-time bag tracking, e-boarding, and passport scanning during check-in. And ESPN's 30 for 30 podcasts make your in-flight time rich with stories that will keep you coming back for more. So sit back, relax, and keep listening to some of the most compelling sports stories ever told. Questionable Dan Levitar. This is my father, Poppy. Do you know who this guy is, Poppy? What's his name? Oh, yes, Marty. Yes, Marty Smith. The Marty Party's in town. Marty, what's on the show today? What do you like? Poppy's shirt. Oh, yeah, that's good. But that's not really teasing something that's in the show. He's already breaking the format. Let's get started. How should Knicks fans feel about David Griffin removing himself from the team's GM search? Scared and lost, same old, same old, and like everybody in the NBA is laughing at you because you just gave, without having a general manager, 70-plus million dollars to Tim Hardaway Jr., who you sent away because you didn't want him before, and now he's keeping you in the future, along with Joe Team Noah and Courtney Lee and all that money, from actually getting free agents a couple of years from now when David Griffin will be better equipped to do that job if he wanted that job. You lead the league and people not wanting that job because David Griffin pulled his name out twice during this entire search. Once reportedly and once actually. They should feel like the guy who goes home to homecoming at his high school 10 years later and expects change. But it's the same old thing. You still got the same people in the stands. You still got the same old boy who was the best athlete in his class wearing the letter jacket trying to pull the same girls. It just doesn't work. Sometimes you got to make change to make change. You like that, fellas? That was you like good. that? That was pretty good. That was, that was, that was, pretty, that was good. pretty good. I grew up in that town. I don't feel like he needs us. He could do his own show without us here. Wow, did you see uh, Phil Jackson in Twitter now? Look at this. Did you see what Phil Jackson did? $12 million a year doing the job the same way that he did the job back when he was doing the job. <laughs> Except now he doesn't have to deal with Carmelo Anthony at all. Look at that. Look how happy this dude is. And how mad are Knicks fans at him putting up pictures. How relaxed he is. Will Landy Melo make the Rockets better or worse? This is such an interesting question, and I'm so glad that Houston's actually trying to ask it because Houston is one of the few teams that's actually trying to stay in the game with the Golden State Warriors star for star. Now, it wouldn't seem like this would fit because he made Mike D'Antoni quit by Mike D'Antoni's own admission of the New York Knicks, and he takes more mid-range jumpers than just about anybody in the sport on a team that wants to take threes, but they want to take their chances going after Golden State, and you have to do that with more stars than they have now. Better on the surface. I can't begin to give you the math and all the minutiae that goes with the salary cap in the NBA. It's so far above my pay grade and my intelligence level, it's sad. However, I know this. Melo gets buckets. He's one of the greatest scoring talents in the history of the league. And I think he needs accountability. Here's the thing about Melo. He seems to get disinterested when they're bad. He's going to be with two great players in Harden and Paul. And look what he does in the Olympics. When he's carefree and dropping buckets, he's great. That is what Daryl Morey is betting on. He is betting on not the Carmelo Anthony you've been seeing the last couple of years, but the Carmelo Anthony from a few years ago who was motivated and cares. Are you kidding me? Melo and the running beer together in the same team? Uh, I can see trouble in the horizon now. Who's going to get more touches now? You know, Melo loves touches, you know, and the running beer loves touches. So, so it's going to be a fight of the touches. I mean, That's Chris, what Chris Paul also likes touches. It's a lot of touching. Yeah, it is a lot of touching. It is a lot of touching. It's going to be a yeah, touch oh, fight. Please stop touch touching. Fight. Don't, no, touch fight. No, no. What is what? A touch fight? <laughs> Should the NBA do something about how bad the Eastern Conference is? This is starting with Mark Cuban, who has said, look, in the West, we're rebuilding. But if we were in the East, we'd be fighting a different fight because you have no stars left in the East. You can make the argument right now that Cleveland has the three biggest stars in the East. And if not the biggest three, because you've got John Wall and the Greek Freak, three of the top five. So if you've got a totally lopsided conference, what you should be doing, if you care about the sports consumer, is reseeding because conferences are an antiquated conference concept just put all 16 of the best teams in order and you're not going to have many from the east up there not yet 
I can't believe that Russell Westbrook and Paul George are going to be on the same team and really have no shot in the West. That tells you how insane that side of the, of the league is. However, since Jordan left the Bulls in 98, it's really been LeBron or nothing in the East. And if he ends up doing what your boy LeVar BBB said and goes to L.A. next year, mm -hmm. Adam, we got to do something. <laughs> okay, if LeBron leaves, that's the last straw. Then we nuke the East. Are you kidding me? Did you see all the pickups of the heat they got over the weekend? Oh, yeah. I'm telling you, they That's got right. Leon Waiters. Yes. You know, they got James Johnson. Yes. You know, I'm telling you, they got that Duke Ellington. You know, that guy. That, you know, that, <laughs> and then you got the, the shoulder breaker. You know, that guy that make the big difference, you know, in the playoff. I'm telling you, I think that the heat aim for, right. for a big run this year. All right. It's Wayne Ellington, not Duke Ellington. Oh. And what's the guy they got from Boston? What's his name? The shoulder breaker, I call him. I know, because you don't know his name. What's his name? I think the big guy with the, with the, with okay. the hair all over the All right, the big That's guy with right. the hair all over the That's right, that guy, that guy, that guy. Do you have a problem with what Bernard Tomic said, or do you admire his honesty? The only reason Bernard Tomic is in the show is because he said something. He's the 59th ranked tennis player in the world. He lost at Wimbledon very quickly. He's got a history of bad boy behavior, fakes injuries, allegedly. And now he says, because he lost in straight sets and just wanted out of there, I'm bored with tennis. I'm dis disillusioned with tennis. He's 24 years old. It's a really lonely sport, and you don't say this out loud. And even if you do feel it, you behave professionally, and you try and get your paycheck by earning it. You do not do something like this at Wimbledon. You don't say it, and then you don't do it. I admire his honesty. I don't appreciate his apathy. We as sports fans want to believe our guys are given everything they have. And to openly admit that you don't care, man, we don't need you. <laughs> Pack it on up and take it on down the highway. Look, there's guys working 48 hours right, a week in right. the factory. Yeah. For thirty-five That's grand right. in that gold That's watch, right. my my cousin Greg got one of those gold calculator watches, and it's it's all has the side light. That's <laughs> right. fantastic. Right. We're off topic here, right? Right. It's but, what I have an issue with that. But <laughs> if you don't want to play Tomic, pack yeah, it up. Pack it up. Tomic? I don't know. We don't even know his name. Pack it up. Well, I I see it in a different uh, different light. You know, I mean. As long as uh, they're willing to give you the money for doing nothing or not even try, you take the money. That's what I do every day. I just show up, I don't do anything, and I take the money. <laughs> my man. I mean, That's right. I mean, wait a minute. What do you mean, my man? One guy's got to pack it up, and the other guy's your man. What is that? You're inconsistent. I don't know, Tommy. I like Poppy's shirt. Coming up next on my son's TV show, David Ross. Fired it back to him. I walk out there and just dropped a you're an effing idiot and he didn't like that too much and um we got in the dugout and we met face to face and uh the manager took us both out of the game and ripped <laughs> us a new one in the locker room it was a it was an ugly it was an ugly scene my son's tv show is brought to you by jaguar the art of performance Joining us at the beach today, David Ross. Former Cubs catcher, two-time world champion. His book, Teammate, is out now. Let's talk to him. Just me. Marty, get out of here. What can you tell us about your upbringing? What would you point to and say, that was the thing that was most responsible for shaping me? Uh, my parents were just hardworking, humble people. Uh, my mom used to never let me wear my hat backwards like that like I was too cocky if I wore my hat backwards or um just uh always you know celebrating and not ever taunting the other team she never let me uh boast about my accomplishments just always wanted me to stay humble and it's something I've carried with me my entire life my dad went to work early in the morning 4 a.m uh he, he, he ran a meat company and uh you know would always pick us up from school he was up at the crack of dawn I worked for him uh, some summers when I was out of school and learned what hard work was, but uh, they were always there if I went on, on on trips to baseball games. They were always the one driving us all and very supportive, always had my back, very loving. Uh, I feel like I could pick up the phone at any time in my life, really, to this day and, and ask, you know, if I was in Russia stranded, I'd pick up the phone and call my parents and they'd find a way to come get me. I read that your father drove an extra 30 minutes when your mother was in labor with you because the hospital there was a little bit cheaper. What do you remember about the financial struggles when you were young? Well, we, early on, I grew up on a, on a, on a rougher neighborhood, and, and <laughs> I remember, I tell everybody the story, I remember getting a new bike every, every Christmas because mine would get stolen about three months in, into, uh, into the neighborhood we lived in. Just, it was a rougher neighborhood. They worked their butt off um, to, to expand our carport 
uh, when we were younger uh, to build an extra bedroom. We had one bathroom that we all shared. Uh, the fun things about that kind of roles have reversed now with each one of my kids have their own bathroom and, uh, and, and room in the house. So things are a little different now. But I just remember them working their tails off so that they could provide for us and give us everything we needed. And that's always stood out to me, even after we moved to a nicer neighborhood uh, when I got into middle school um, and, and, and kind of found, you know, we were more middle class once they, once they established themselves. But, um, you know, I just always appreciated their hard work and, and their sacrifice for us. They always put the, they always put the kids first. Who's the guy that you got for a home run that you were running around the bases and you were like delirious because you're like, I can't believe that that just happened, that I got that guy this time? Well, Andrew Miller, I mean, honestly, one of the best pitchers in baseball, Game 7 of the World Series, that home run I hit, uh, I, I, I don't know how I hit that ball, honestly. This guy's one of the best pitchers uh, in, that, in that moment, especially. He, he was dominate the playoffs, and um, he th- I think he threw it in my barrel more than I, more than I hit the home run. Who's a guy that you faced and you got into the batter's box and you were like, I have no chance here. I am going to swing. I'm going to come up here, but I'm going to go back to the dugout of failure. Mariano Rivera, the most dominating at bat I've ever had. The guy, I really felt like I had no shot. Like my at bat was over and I felt like, I, I like, okay, well, that's why he's the best because I had, I had zero chance. Have you ever had to be separated from a teammate? Has that ever happened in your career where oh, yeah. there was something? Yeah, what happened? Go uh, ahead, give I, that story I, up. I was in uh, I was in Double A, and uh, a guy by the name of Eric uh, Young was was had a perfect game through six, uh, and we come out uh, for the seventh, and we, there's a little guy that I had played with named Mike Metcalf who was leading off the inning, and um, uh, Young was really a fastball slider guy, and he shook the first pitch of this at bat for some reason. He wanted to throw a changeup, so he shook me off, shook me off, and I walk out and talk to him. I was like, "Hey, what, you want to throw a changeup? Why do you want to throw a changeup? That's your worst pitch." Like this guy can't—he's a little bitty guy. Like he's just let him put it in play. He's like, "No, I want to throw my changeup. I'm a changeup." He—he he had a triple. We were winning by one run. He had a triple in the seventh, and I walk out there. I fire the ball back to him as hard as I possibly could from the <laughs> umpire, and. I walk out there. No, I, yeah, I fired it back there. I walk out there and just dropped a, you're an effing idiot. And he didn't like that too much. And um, we got in the dugout. And we met face to face. And uh, the manager took us both out of the game and ripped us a new <laughs> one in the locker room. It was, a, it, was an ugly, it was an ugly scene. But that's like a Crash Davis, Nuke Lelouch situation. He was throwing a perfect game because of the game you were calling. What's he doing shaking you off? Why is he shaking me off? You know, I'm all about shaking me off if you're a pitcher and you got confidence in it. But... You know, that's why I walked out there disgusted. Like, hey, you know, probably not the best time to do this. And uh, he, was, he was sticking to his guns, and it, it did not work out for us. Well, Arietta, you caught Arietta's no-hitter. Did he shake you off, or he wasn't doing a lot of shaking you off? He shook me off. He, was in, he actually shook me off more the later the game went because he was just – he was shaking to a lot of heaters. He felt good on his fastball, and I, I, I was – said after that like I felt like he was walking me through it more than I was walking him through it well, so why weren't I've been you on both sides that time why weren't was, you offended that time it's because Arietta can dust the floor with you that's he, why Arietta's uh, yeah, big he could beat me out well John, Young's a bigger guy than me too but uh uh Arietta Arietta has had a no hitter I never had a no hitter so I was kind of like you walk me through this big fella because I don't know what I'm doing David Poppy wants a crack at you what do you got Poppy yes David I heard that your son Colt is also a catcher do you give him a lot of tips he is a catcher. He, uh, I leave him alone. I let the coaches in his, his little league you know, mess with him. Uh, if he asks me anything, I tell him. But he doesn't like dad coaching him up. He wants dad just to cheer him on. He gets mad when I, when I coach him up. So I just leave him alone and, and try to pat him on the butt, tell him good job. And as long as he hustles and plays the game hard, I got no problems oh, with him. I don't believe you for a second, though, Ross. I feel like I feel like Ross. I feel like you want to correct the coaches when they're correcting him wrong. I feel like you're probably not real quiet about that, right? I, I sit like way down the left field line on the back of my truck, and I just watch. I just want to be a fan, and I go high five him when he gets hits, and that's the only time. But yeah, I, I'm sure that's coming at some point. I probably will want to have a little more influence. But right now, I'm just he's, he's only eight, so I just want to leave him alone, let him have fun. But that's hard to do because yes. I used to yell at him yeah, when he didn't hustle, yes, right? right? And he wasn't very good at baseball, so I imagine that would be hard. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. Uh, but thanks for having me on. See you guys. Gracias, David. Gracias. Highly questionable is broadcast from the Clevelander Hotel on beautiful South Beach, Miami. 
Daddy, where do babies come from? Uh, well, uh, honey. Mommy went to the store. Oh, well, you see, um, well, there's a mommy and a daddy, right? Right. And see, when they call Geico,、uh, they could save a bunch of money on car insurance. Oh, really? And that makes them happy? Yes, that makes them very happy. That's good. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we could have this talk, Sunshine. <laughs> Geico, because saving 15 percent or more on car insurance is always a great answer. Time to play the game that love and marry party. Do you question? You give us the topics and events, we question them. Sounded like a partier. That's a Marty party if I've ever heard of one. Do you question if Demar Derozan takes the Drew League too seriously? Derozan scored 41 in a loss. People do take the Drew League very seriously. Who's he upset with here? Is it his teammate Swaggy P or is it the referee? That arrow's not helping me. Oh, ooh, he threw the basketball at the referee with a brick wall back there. Um. Okay. Yeah, you can't really. Do, you can't really, oh. You can't really do that. Can't do that. So the high school gym, not much space. So the question is: Is he taking the Drew League too seriously? And the answer, of course, is when you throw a basketball in a rage at the referee at the Drew League, you're taking it too seriously. Oh, Swaggy P is. Swaggy the, P. He's the team leader here. He's <laughs> escorting a cooler heads. The voice of reason. Good work, Swag. He's already a better leader. He's a winner, Swaggy P. Now with that mid-level in Golden State. Boy. Where was all that fire when he played the Cavaliers in the playoffs? <laughs> oh, some <laughs> that's right. I mean, yeah, that's right. Where was all that fire?、Yeah. You know, I mean, he was like a, like a puppy dog there playing LeBron and all of this. So he's a big guy in the Drew League. Do you question Alec Ovechkin's conditioning? <laughs> <laughs> My father's always got trouble with that name. It's Alexander Ovechkin. He got married a year ago. This is the wedding reception. I don't know why it took so long. Maybe because、Whoa. they had to get this as entertainment right here. Is that a shirtless Ovechkin? That is. I thought that would look better shirtless. He's ripped. That's a professional athlete. So wait a minute. How do you describe this dancing? <laughs> I do question his conditioning. Yes, I do. <laughs> that seems like a fair question to ask. He's not in the fittest of shape, but you know what he's ready for? It appears a party is what he's ready for. Boy, that guy plays hockey. That means that you can also play hockey. Really? That's right. Yeah, I don't look like that with my shirt off. That looks like me many years ago. <laughs> Do you question if hay is soft? You are our country expert, Marty. Is hay always soft? No. In fact, it is scratchy. It can leave abrasions. You can even need band aids and peroxide and all of those things.、Wow. I grew up in the hay field, man. That was my summer job. Wow. More expertise than I expected there. Let's check the video. Oh! <laughs> all the things Marty said are true.、Wow. All of them. Abrasive. Abrasive. That'll leave a mark. <laughs> Holy smokes! What kind of video is that? That's a concussion. He's missing the next game. Oh my god! What happened to the guy? Where did that come Who from? Who convinced him that was a good idea? <laughs> Who made that? Who threw it? What? Is, what is off camera there? Do you know what is softer than hay? That kid.、Oh. <laughs> really, really, we're gonna kill the kid because he got knocked over、oh, no. by、did. a giant ball of hay. Do you question how these fellows escape on harm? That should be the name of our show. Honestly, it shouldn't be highly questionable. It should be. Do you question how this fellow escaped unharmed? <laughs> oh! oh! Wait a minute. How are we defining unharmed? My God, he didn't die. But that ain't unharmed. There are a lot、wow. of hexagrams between yeah, unharmed broken, and didn't die. We got a broken fib- fibula, <laughs> tibia. We got an ACL, and that is more. This is like redneck hour on the eight highly questionable show. Yeah, this is hillbilly questionable. See, That's what this we is. We are hosting. We are being good hosts to our hillbilly friends. Yes, they brought in the token redneck in the company, and look what happens. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Hey, he lost a shoe. Wow. Or a flip flop. I mean, he's like, I got hit. I got hit once. I was on a skateboard, and I got hit by a car. And then, guy stopped the car on my foot. On the and he's looking at me, going, "Hey, man, are you okay? Get the car off of me." Does he think this is storytelling with Marty Smith? <laughs> well, I think that、uh, it could have been worse. <laughs> really? Yeah. How much? Yeah, we go. Oh no. <laughs> is this worse? 
Are you guys sure this is worse? Oh, I mean, no, it's no. bad, but is oh. it worse? I don't think it's worse. It's worse. <laughs> Not for the guy in the back. The guy in the back had the cushion of the guy in the front. Time to play the game that finally has a co-host with great littles like me. See? Oh, no. Really? <laughs> really? On ESPN, the Home Run Derby. Yes, I will be out there tonight because it's in Miami, because it's close by. Justin Bohr against Mike Mustaka. Are you ready for that? Let's check in with Aaron Judge. He broke the record for home runs by a rookie here yesterday. Yankee rookie, I should say, and that was not yesterday. I think that was Saturday. Regardless. Was that yesterday? Was it yesterday? It doesn't matter. I don't know. It's a home run. He hits the ball far. You're going to watch him tonight. Marty, are you intrigued? Absolutely, I'm intrigued, and I will go as well since it's in Miami, and I'm in Miami. I'm really intrigued by this Logan Morrison, Gary Sanchez thing. I want to see Sanchez hit bombs. Oh, all right, because Logan, Logan Morrison thinks he should be in the home run derby because he's got a bunch. Anyways, Bobby, are you intrigued? Oh, see, see, I'm very intrigued. Are you kidding me? The Wafer is going to be at that event tonight. I'm telling you something. He's going to do something that is going to make Mayor baseball history, major league history tonight. He's going to strike out. Right. That's right. He's going to strike out. John swinging, Carlos. you know. First time ever. He calls John Carlos Stanton the whiffer for those who are not un- uh, initiated. Somewhere on TV, Jeopardy. Yeah, it's always somewhere on TV, right? Uh, sports question? Do we have a sports question? Let's see if we can get the sports question. 100 plus assists in an NHL season has been accomplished only 13 times, 11 times by this player. Joe, who is Magic Johnson? Oh, no. Oh, Diane. Who is Wayne Gretzky? Wayne Gretzky. We're talking about hockey, not the NBA. Awesome. Joe! Come on, Joe. Come on, Joe! Come on, Joe. Joe! 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 <laughs> Joe! <laughs> man, we don't even need to end. Come, Come on, on Joe. Joe! Joe! Come on, man! That's all the time we have today. Thank you for watching. Our thanks to Marty. He'll be back tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Marty, you did the hell of a job. Oh! oh got I got one. him. I got, got him. He's a rookie. One. He's a rookie. Yeah! <laughs>